Hey there friends, welcome to episode number 140 of It'll Be Fine. Oh my gosh, I am so glad you are here today. Notice I didn't mention the socially distant part because we're gonna start to amalgamate now. We're gonna bring in, bring in some friends into the kitchen. We're gonna keep some stuff on Zoom. We're gonna do a little bit of both. It's beautiful and doubly vaxxed. People can come in my house now. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, but it is episode 140. Friends, 140, we are 10 episodes away from my parents coming back for their review so far. Oh my God, can't wait to get their thoughts. And I think today's episode will be a contender. I definitely, definitely do. To celebrate episode 140, I can't think of anyone better than Trish Sullivan. Trish is a Chicago-based comic who I've gotten to know over the past year and a half of doing comedy on Zoom. It's the Windy City. It's got to be a windy day, of course. <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad to get to bake with her. Trish also has a new addition to her family. Yes, there's a new baby to talk about. Oh, there is, there is. And we are going to get to it. I'm going to get inside. It's super windy. Friends, it's going to be fun. What's on the show today? Is it blueberry crumb cake? Yeah, it is. I know, it is. Yeah, today we are making blueberry crumb cake. Here is what you need. Okay, so here's what we need for this blueberry crumb cake. You can find this on the Food Network website. The link is in the show description, an Ina Garten recipe. Okay, instead of sour cream, I'm going to go with Icelandic yogurt. It's a great substitute. We need some granulated sugar, we've got our eggs, we have unsalted butter, we're gonna need a lemon. We need some cinnamon, some baking powder, some vanilla. I'm gonna go with clove instead of nutmeg. I will make it work. I've got my Kyle kosher salt. We need some all-purpose baking flour. We also need baking soda. I am going to go with some coconut sugar there instead of brown sugar. It won't be as sweet, but it'll work just fine. I've got my blueberries. I'm going to top, instead with sugar, I'm gonna to top it with some toffee bits and coconut flakes. It's going to work great. You sound like Meg Ryan in um, Jogles versus the Volcano. That's a classic I have not seen in a minute. <laughs> Hello, Patricia. I love that. I love that movie so much there is so much good stuff for meg ryan just so much i mean a couple of clunkers but for the most part i always enjoy meg ryan movie. me too right up until she like butchered her face she did that so, is not yeah it's sad she looks like the joker she she yeah she's i cannot say that will be fine Meg Ryan's plastic surgery attempts. <laughs> no. No. Me not having unsalted butter, that's fine. That'll be fine. I must ask, how is the new addition? He's perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect. What's his name? Ori. It's a Hebrew name that means my light. Hmm. His Irish name is Ori O'Cookie. Because, you know, he's half Irish. Yeah, I love it. Maybe not half, but a big chunk of them's Irish. <laughs> he cries like an Irishman. He yells pretty loud. That is awesome. And a perfect way to celebrate episode 140 of It'll Be Fine. Perfect. It's perfect. 140. I, that's amazing. How long have you been doing this? Since September of 2019. Oh, okay. At the start of the pandemic, if we circle back to March 2020, I think I had done like 12 episodes. And in a year and a bit, I have done a lot because of amazing folks like yourself that I've met on the internet. And it's been, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of people on the internet. It's, yeah. Too many sometimes, I think. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I definitely don't. <laughs> But um, how, how is life in Chicago? Are you performing in person or are you? I, I, I did a, I was in an outdoor show in the beginning of May, May 1st actually. 
and I'm booked on a show in July, but because my daughter was having a baby at the end of May, beginning of June, I didn't book anything for May or June because I didn't know when I was going to be gone. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be on uh, Katie Zane's Cautiously Optimistic on July 18th. I'm extremely excited to be on their show. And I'm going to go to their show. I'm hoping to go to the show on the 11th of July just to watch. Merry crumb cake. I'm excited. Yay. I am too. We're doing a recipe from the Barefoot Contessa. Who would... She's my food crush, I think. I just adore Ina Garden so much. I she, Do you have any chef crushes? Um, yeah, but she's dead. I love Julia Child. I love yeah. Julia Child. Her cookbooks are like, they're not cookbooks. They're not books of recipes. They are how to cook. She teaches you how to cook and tells you to do things and then tells you why. And then you can take it and apply it to other recipes it's amazing. And 90% humidity is still miserable. But I think we're in the 80s. Yeah, we're, we're a little bit warmer, but if anyone sees my hair start to like curl up, it's because of that. So that'll be today's drinking game. How often does Kelly do this? I've already done it four times. I did it in the intro. Okay, so to start this party, we're going to preheat our oven. If you haven't done so already, at 350. Ugh. I just did that. Easy peasy. And then this, I mean, for baking, really, you could do anything. You could do this in muffin cups and make like individual little crumb cakes, or you could go full pan like I did. Ta da! Here we go. <laughs> yeah, so we buttered, or at least I buttered and floured. You can use coconut oil, whatever you want, but lube it up. And set it aside. Lube and powder. That sounds like a band of, like a high school rock band or something. Lube and powder. <laughs> oh dear Lord. Okay. So what we're going to do for the start of this. Now this recipe, the mise en place game for this is pretty strong. There's a lot of things, but it's a pretty simple recipe, a crumb cake. It's not, it's not too crazy. So we're going to start with the strudel. And um, what we need is a bowl, and we need to grab our sugars, granulated and brown, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and mix that all together. So I'll just go grab a bowl. Nice, nicely done. The mise en place game is strong on this one, but don't freak out. It is going to be fine. Oh, look, that looks like a scary face. <laughs> how, much of the, how much of the nutmeg were we supposed to do? It calls for uh, what would be considered a pinch, which is one eighth of a teaspoon. So not much at all. Okay. So we're gonna do that. So our sugars, as I say, our nutmeg and our cinnamon. I'm actually using clove. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's the name of the show. That's one beauty of doing this over Zoom. You don't know what mine's gonna taste like, so it's fine. <laughs> It doesn't matter. And uh, then what we're going to do is take our melted butter. Uh, if you're like me in Toronto, it melted on its own. <laughs> and we're just going to mix this together and then set it aside. So that what is does the flour go in? Did I miss that? Oh, uh, you know what? Melted butter, flour, then set it aside. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to follow the directions for once, uh, you know. I'm uh, I'm counting on you. Oh well, you're in trouble. I did the mise en place, but I didn't read, memorize the re the recipe. Most of the time, I don't read the recipe, so it's fine. <laughs> it's gonna work out. It's it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be delicious. Yeah, and this is perfect for a dessert. It's perfect for breakfast. It's good for lunch. It's good because it's Tuesday. You know, whatever. I enjoy. Did I? Did you because I'm really bad with time anymore, so I want to make sure it's actually. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm a day late. Right. I'm early. <laughs> now, did you grow up in a house where your siblings were good in the kitchen, or were you in, like a takeout family? Oh, my mother cooked all the time, and then I cooked when I I cooked. Yeah. Um, 
we had pizza places and stuff that we ordered in a, and the Chinese restaurant in the neighborhood. But yeah. Cool. So what would be a Trish Sullivan dish if I were to come over? What is your specialty? I make this, this beef stew with two kinds of mushroom or uh, two kinds of mustards, um, brandy and red wine mushrooms and uh, carrots that's to die for. Oh, that, that, I, that gives me goosies. That sounds really good. It is. Hold on. I forgot something in the fridge. Sweat. So I'm just mixing this up, the strudel. Give me a stir. Great. Okay. Okay, so the streusel is streusel. Streusel, streusel, strudel. Streusel, not strudel. There are certain words, like food words, I get confused all the time, that being one of them. Also, mimosa, samosa, and cannoli and cannelloni. I get samosas and samoas confused because samosas are an Indian food and samoas are a Girl Scout cookie. And Do guides or Girl or Scouts? In, we have in girl guides. We have girl okay. guides and we have two kinds of cookies, vanilla and chocolate. Oh, we have mint. We have three. That's it. That's all we got. We have two kinds of peanut butter Girl Scout cookies. We have chocolate covered peanut butter cookies and we have peanut butter sandwich cookies and they're both fantastic. Sorry. You have health care. You have a freaking health care system. So <laughs> I'm going to take, I think you won. So yeah. Quite possibly. Alrighty, so we're setting that aside. We'll grab it in a second. What you're gonna need next, if you've got a KitchenAid, an electric mixer, use it, or do good old fashioned elbow grease, whatever you choose. What we are going to do next is take more butter and some sugar. So for this, uh, we need, how much sugar do we need? Three quarter cup of granulated sugar and three quarters of a stick of butter. And we're going to start the cake. Oh, I'm just creaming the butter and the sugar. Clouds, like Bob Ross would say, happy little clouds. Is add in our eggs. We need two eggs. Crack them in one at a time. We need the whole egg for this one. You don't have to worry about separating the yolks and the whites or, you know, causing division. So did, were you taught to like crack your eggs into a bowl and then put them into the dish when you're cooking? I, <laughs> I've learned from doing this show, I don't have any genuinely good egg cracking technique. Like I can't do it with one hand. I just tap the bowl and then I crack it. That's usually what I do. Sometimes I hit it on the counter, but. I always crack on the counter. Oh. As somebody told me you'd get, I'd get shells in it, and I believed them. It was probably my mother. I believed almost everything she told me. Um, George Rivard, Toronto comic, who has been on It'll Be Fine before, told me that the, the salmonella worry is in the eggshell. Oh. You never want to get the eggshell in it, because that's where the danger is. Um. I should note, I am also extremely gullible, so he could be lying. No, it sounds vaguely familiar to me, so I'm not going to argue. So we're going to mix the egg together on a lower setting than what we were just doing to cream uh, the butter and the sugar. And then what we're going to do next is grab some vanilla, some lemon zest, and if you don't have sour cream, you can also use like a Greek yogurt, a plain Greek yogurt, which is what uh, I'm doing. It's just, it's just a wee bit healthier. <laughs> it's also it a, an old woman when I could eat sour cream. How much of the vanilla? Was it a teaspoon? So for the vanilla, uh, we need one teaspoon. Then we need two thirds of a cup of sour cream and about a half a teaspoon of lemon zest. If you don't have a fresh lemon in your house and you just have the extract, just do a little, little dash of uh, lemon extract. Actually. 
That can work too. This is gonna be good. Did you see my cool um, thing? It's like a you fill you pull it down to the level, and then you push it out. So then it's like really good for sour cream and mayonnaise and stuff like that. That's pretty awesome. Pampered Chef. I have Pampered Chef stuff. Pampered oh. Chef is amazing. This is like, this is a Pampered Chef thing. Huh. I, tons, I, 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 I wanted to sell Pampered Chef, but you I didn't make that much work in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I've got I've got a couple things like the pepper chef pizza stone I have is the best. I it's great for doing an at home pizza. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's a good product. All right, doing a bit of this. Well, summary. Oh All right, it's such a pretty yellow. I know. I feel like with the vanilla that I've added in the bowl, it kind of looks like a Horshack test. Yeah, it totally It's like, I, it kind of looks like a puppy. <laughs> Viewers at home can decide what that was. It looks like a puppy. All right. So once we have added in the vanilla and the lemon and the sour cream or Greek yogurt, plain, please don't do some flavor like cappuccino. Um, I mean, if you had lemon Greek yogurt, that would work, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. All right. And then would add extra sweetness, though, right? Yeah. It does get a little sweetness. I mean, that's why I go plain. It, it just kind of, because we've, you're basically adding in more sugar if you use one that's like a flavor. So do, if you go Greek yogurt, try to stick to no flavor. It'll be a little better. Um, now, in a separate bowl, we are going to do our flowers and our baking sodas and our other things. Another little, one of those little cups. Oh. I'm just showing off my pampered chef stuff. Sherry, Sherry Hardman, the Canadian, or a comedian in um, Seattle. Yeah. The, she just did an online pampered chef show. And um, I, I don't need anything, so I bought my daughter's stuff because I was at my daughter's house because she just had a baby, yeah. and I was looking for um, a microplane, so I ended up buying her. A, she didn't have a microplane. I was like, you just got married two years ago. How do you not have a microplane? How did I fail you? So um, I ordered her a little microplane zester from there. I feel like I should be like, on the food, you know, what's that other thing, like QVC, and then you can get the microplane. Okay. Dream big. Dream. Anything's possible. Sure. <laughs> Anything's possible. Alrighty. So what we're going to do now is to sift together. So you can do this a few ways. You can get a good old fashioned fork. You can get something like this, or you can get the contraption that you put it in and then you squeeze it and it comes through the bottom. But basically mm -hmm. we want to take our flour and I'm gonna pour this in the bowl here. So I've got flour in the bowl and then add in the baking soda and the baking powder and just like mix it around as you go. So if it said sifted, there's like a sifting and a sifted difference. One where you can like mix it together and then one where you have to like mix it, add, mix it, add. This you can, this can all go in the pool at the same time. So. I always use a, like a sieve like this. There you go. So I've just added in the flour. I'm doing this in batches. Um, and so going in here is the baking powder, the salt, the flour, and the baking soda. So just do this all together. We're almost there, guys. All we need to do is put this in the pan and cook it. Blueberries. Yes, we need blueberries too. The blueberries uh, are to be folded in. Folded in. I I was so good in preparing for this. Yeah. I went to a I went to a farmer's market on Saturday and bought the blueberries from a farmer. 
because blueberries, man. I love me a blueberry. And I love me a farmer's market. They just reopened in Toronto. We're able to do like a lot more social stuff. My mom and dad got a haircut today, which is great. Oh, wow. So excited. Um, but yeah, I went to my first farmer's market of the year last week and it was just awesome to like talk to chief mongers and people. This was the first one I've been to since um, 2019. I didn't do anything last year. Yeah. yeah. I was much more locked down than a lot of people. So is it time to add these yet? Yeah, we are going to fold in those blueberries. So what you're basically doing for that is think like for folks at home watching, think like you're folding a bed sheet. You know, you're not stirring this around. You're just going corner to corner to corner to corner. Looks like a cool dance, doesn't it? Do this at a club. I just. It'll be popular. Don't ask Moira Rose how to fold in things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whenever anybody says fold in something now, I'm, I'm in shit's creek. Fold in cheese. <laughs> fold in cheese. Yeah, just folding this in. Doing the thing. Me too. Look. <laughs> With one of my pepper chef spatulas because, you know, I think I'm going to like see if I can get an endorsement deal. From one episode of your show, I'm going to get an endorsement deal with pepper chef. If I can be of help, then do it. They will sponsor your Netflix special and comedy tour. <laughs> That would be great if your merch table was just Pampered Chef items. Ah, it would be perfect. And I'm singing. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, uh, somebody told me to go full Andy Kaufman with it. Just start your set, start your set singing. I, was, I love it. I like that phrase, full Andy Kaufman. Maybe that could be my Netflix special name. Full Andy, Andy Kaufman. Kaufman. Trish Sullivan, full Andy Kaufman, done. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do now is put the stuff in this bowl into this pan. We're going to do that. Um, if you're like me and you're using a spring foam pan, uh, for the love of Pete, make sure it's locked in so it doesn't go everywhere. <laughs> Not that I've ever had that happen. No, me neither. Yeah. I've never had any mishaps in the kitchen. Perfect every time. Every time. Every time. That's how you know it will be fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelly's a nickus. Perfect every time. Hell no. Um, all right. Do this. Well, this is a beautiful color. This is looking nice. All right. So basically, we're just going to spread this around. Um, it says to spread using your fingers. I'm not going to do that. Oh, that's for the streusel. Thank you. Just use a knife and then <laughs> use your fingers for the strudel streusel. I'm an editor. I really read well. <laughs> Put on the rest of the streusel because I think there's too much. I read your mind. I did the same thing. I put a nice layer of it, um, but there we is. All right. This is going to go Not this much. Yeah. I thought that. I mean, and mine is like totally covered. And it smells so damn good. Damn. It could be a candle. All right. Let's put this into the oven for about 40 minutes. Could use 50. It could use 30. Every oven's different, just like you and me. Funny. Yeah. Just decorated this with some toffee and some oh, coconut. Oh, it looks so good. So good. I have I have powdered sugar or confectioner sugar. Um, and in this handy, I swear to God, I have all the pampered chef, pampered chef little <laughs> shaker thing. And this is a newer one because my old plastic one, it cracked. So they replaced it with a metal one, and now I have a new one. I I will uh, I will withdraw my comment earlier of the drinking game between the every time I do this. The drinking game for this episode is every time Trish says pampered chef. 
Your shot. Are you going to edit that into the beginning or put it in the notes to the episode? Oh, it'll be fine. It's good where it is. Thank <laughs> goodness. All the trash. Oh. Mine's a little, the, the blueberries all sunk to the bottom. So <sighs> I think Paul Hollywood would give me a bad grade. <laughs> but it looks, it smells delicious. Oh man. I can't wait to tuck into this. So bon appetit, my dear. Thank you for doing this with me. Uh, having me this is awesome this is fun what do you think of it i think it's great i'm really impressed at how well i did because i'm not really a baker mm. you know what this would be good with vanilla ice cream i made i make um vanilla i, I make homemade ice cream sometimes i have a machine it's easy is it from pampered shop no, it's not. It's from Cuisinart. <laughs> this, oh my gosh. This is light. Yeah, it really it's is. sweet enough, like not kicking you in the pants. The beautiful blueberry flavor. I love my strudel streusel on top. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. You know, you might even be able to take like strudel and like chop it, you know, like cakes instead. Strudel streusel. And I gotta say, my coconut toffee on top is not a bad call, nor is your ice cream suggestion. No. Oh man, this is a winner. This is. This is really good. Yeah. Who needs a relationship? Jeez. <laughs> and the other thing is, the older we get, I think, especially women, the more shit we have to be pissed off about, and it can be funny. One hundred percent. 100%. I was doing a show online recently and I got told I had mom energy. Uh, the, the host of the show was like, how many kids do you have? I was like, zero. She's like, oh, you have mom energy. I was like, that me? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to ask how old you are, but how long have you been doing comedy? Um, well, it's kind of a two-part answer. I started off at 16 doing tech at comedy clubs in Toronto because okay. I love the board. I love the buttons and the lights and the knobs and all that stuff. So I started doing that then. And then I did my first stand-up set at 37. Um, somewhere in my 30s, I had this voice in my head that kept going, you should do stand-up. You should be on that stage. And I was like, who's doing that? You know? And um, finally took the leap at 37. So that was what, about 20 years from setting up mics to actually taking the mic? <laughs> That's a good long jump. I'm not going to say how old I was, but I've only been doing stand up for it'll be three years at the end of the summer. Are you uh, no. And I would have guessed. Wow. Thank you. I like that. That makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, very good. It'll be fine.